Um, okay. Uh, just a quick video showing something. I've shown a few people before, but this is probably going to be a public video, so I'll try to get by it very fast. Uh, nonetheless, uh, this is the R160 created by Transimanjo or Piquito O2, however you want to call them. Uh, and recently, for those who play CYD, you may have noticed that the train has been in the game for about a week or two now. Uh, we said that it was testing out new stuff, and we weren't lying about that. However, uh, most of the stuff may not be things you see. Uh, with that, uh, I've created a little thing uh, to make it easier on people who help me with this stuff. In which case, uh, at the current moment now would be Gamer, uh, Gamer Gaps. If you know him, he's an admin in CVID and all that, you know, cool stuff. So, uh, you can see on the bottom left of the Roblox uh, screen here that it says Program Creator. All this shows you is this. Um, instead of us having to manually input information, what this is here for is to make it easier for us to make programs if need be in the future or just easier overall with a more visual approach at the whole thing. The way you make programs currently, which is the way I do it in CYD, uh, is we use a table, uh, which means that you just put a bunch of information into like one line of what you guys may think is code or script. You just put it all there, and then we have another piece of script that shoots that information out into the train, and then the train auto applies it to where it needs to be. So this is showing you all the programs that we currently have, including some special programs that you may not see as buttons on the train. Uh, so uh, I will start with, let's say the Z or the Z, uh, or actually, let's go all the way up to the A, because why not? So we'll go here uh, and click this and we'll press load. So what this, what I've just done is, uh, these are all programs that already are on the train, right? So me just clicking this is just saying, okay, he selected this, and then once I press load, it's gonna give me all the information from that program. Uh, so here you can see uh, that the program name is called A1, because the button is called A1. Uh, you have the front LCD, the text that displays on the front and on all the other, um, you know, signs on the train. You have the side destination, the scroll, which we can show off here in a second, uh, and a few other things. So with this, uh, it's a very simple system. Uh, I try to make it simple at least. You click this button here and it will switch between diamond or not in service or circle, you know, anything you may need this for. So there's the circle, there's the diamond, and it'll apply uh, to the interior text on its own, depending on what you selected here. Then you have the signs here. You can press these buttons to scroll through how many signs uh, there are. Once you reach the end, it won't go past, obviously. Uh, but um, we have a value in the train, uh, which determines how many times the exterior sign changes. And so uh, with this, even if you don't apply information to sign three or four or two, it'll automatically determine, okay, he only has one sign. That's fine. Let's do this and you know get this for him and put it on there. This is how you could think. We'll we'll put the name the number automatically uh, that he only has one, two, three, four signs available. Uh, so this will auto apply. And uh, this is very easy. You could just type in it. So uh, hi, hi, hello, with the next mission point. And with the scroll, which I will turn on, I have it set up a little weird. But you click on the edge right here, which will turn it on. And you could type in the text which sign you want to scroll. So I want our fourth one to scroll, so it just it'll pass by, uh, and it'll take a second because it's a short amount of text. So even after it passes by, it may display as empty for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, and here's your interior sign text, which we can see. I'll change it to testing. Here's your fine system stuff. So I'll just set these to some random letters C D. And the image is actually really cool because all you got to do is um, find an image. So let's say the uh, nine train, just to make it obvious that, um, that it's going to be cursed. But 
just to make it obvious that we changed to something. I just type right, like right on top of this. I click it and I just paste. Oh, I guess my paste isn't working. That's weird. Hold on. Copy asset ID. Wow, my paste is not working. That is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? All right, let's insert it real quick and then copy. There we go. Now it is. I just type it in there and boom, now it says nine. We can even change this over here and you'll see it'll auto change the signs and all that. So the nine to, <laughs> to ozone, that's gonna be great. Here we have our stop pattern. Um, essentially all this is gonna do is uh, it just shows you uh, where your train is stopping at, you know, what burrow, stuff like that. You can see that the transfer here are white is because there's no transfer there. So if you need to edit it, you can. But if I try typing, I don't know if you can hear my keyboard, it won't let me, which is why we have these little buttons here in place. Um, what this is for is just so that if I want to, you know, fix Dykeman Street and put a BX12 transfer here exactly just like that, me clicking this edit button just allows me to edit anything here. Uh, this little like disc is actually the audio, uh, which will play uh, as announcements. If I click this, you can see that there is no this is audio, which is why it says this is, but I do have a departure audio, which is this here. Uh, ex yeah, exactly. So, uh, and I can do this with any of them. Uh, of course, these don't have uh, audios, which is why they say this is our next stop. But essentially, you get the gist. Uh, and I could just switch these back. Now, let's say in the event that um, I made a mistake here. Uh, I want it to go express from Rockway all the way to leftwards. Then you have the little delete button here. And now this is my program. So I've done significant changes here with this. Um, uh, like in terms of the stop creator and whatnot. But uh, just explaining a little more. Uh, this will show you the announcement tabs here. This will add a stop. So if I added another stop here, it would add it all the way to the bottom. This will reset this entire selection. So it will delete everything here. The T, as you can see here, will test the program on the train. And the X will undo the very last one. So it will delete from down here all the way up. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we can press T or we can go to the export page and you'll see the test button here. Uh, but we'll press T here. You'll see it'll, it'll just close itself so that we can take a look at what's on the train. Um, and you'll see there it is. Hi, hello. <laughs> and it scrolls and whatnot, and it'll it'll do the job, uh, which is great. And I think I put I might have put hi, hello twice, or there might be a small little bug, which is okay. Yeah, there's a small little bug, which I'll fix on the train, it seems. Or is there? Yeah, <laughs> you see, it's weird. It's like it works for a second, and then it doesn't. Anyway, it's fixable. Uh, but still, you can see the side scrolls and whatnot. And then we can take a look in here. You can see the fine system applied the changes that we made. Uh, when 90th Street. And if we get there, after, uh, you know, Rockaway, we should go express right to Lefferts. So 26 stops after this should say Lefferts. Yep, just Lefferts. So we skipped those stops. As for the interior signage, um... Testing, you can see that's the change we made. Uh, and also the circle, the nine, all that fun stuff. Uh, and then you have the nine and the, f this is so cursed, I know. Now, if we were to get on the train and, um, of course it's gonna play an A train announcement because that's what was already applied to the uh, thing. If we was to open the doors, oh, okay, I guess it didn't do it, but still. Essentially, it would play the announcement. Uh, of course, this isn't done, so I have to fix a few things, clearly. <laughs> the exterior sign has proven this. Uh, but yes, uh, essentially that is the case with this. Now, the program creator is not just uh, down to the 160. Uh, the 160 is certainly easier because it uses a lot of text labels. Um, however, uh, it's it'll be adapted to all of the trains that are coming in the future, uh, even SMEs to an extent. Uh, to where you can automatically just make your own roll signs and stuff with it. Uh, which we already have that, just not in this 
Well, I have that, just not in this place, because this is for the 160, which is just the fully complete version to an extent. Now, back to the program creator. Uh, I'm just going to load another program real quick. We're going to load the F to Coney Island by Across Town. You can see all my info here. My scroll is still on, but uh, just because it's on doesn't mean it actually will, I hope. I have to make this turn off in the event. Because uh, this scroll feature was added afterwards because Gamer had told me, oh, well, some of them scroll. And I was like, I know, I've seen it, but I don't know which, like, how does it work? Which signs or whatnot. So we have the scrolling here and which, which one scrolls and whatnot. Anyways, um, you know, you got all the stops here and shit. So it's, that's cool. Uh, all via Crosstown. Uh, we'll just test this instead. And then it'll give it, give it a second so it'll load in the correct info there. But Culver Local, you got Coney Island, and then you got, should be like via Crosstown. Yep, there you go. So now we can look in the train. Our next stop should be, yep, Parsons. And all of our stops here are just going to be via the, the G-Line. So, you know, it, it, it's a little, it's simple. It makes it easier for us when we're making programs. If we make a mistake, we know before we finally just put it in there. Uh, and so, like I said, we have the 188 that's being worked on at the moment. Um, this can be adapted to that. Even though it uses images on the outside, which is what makes the fonts look like they do in real life, um, it can be adapted. Uh, so... With that in mind, I think that concludes the video. I could probably make a video showing it off on the 188. But for now, this just shows the, 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 it, it shows what we're trying to like show off here. Uh, we've done the same thing with buses as well. Well, I've done, I keep saying we, like if it's a team, it's me. Um, I do appreciate though, because Gamer has helped a lot with the programs. I'm not good with knowing what programs say and do. Uh, but I've adapted this to buses as well. Uh, you can make signs on the bus with a similar system. Uh, next stop systems as well is what we've set it up with. So that instead of you having to go type it out and you know manually put the transfers on, you have it all in a UI that'll make it easier for you. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the gist of it. Uh, that should be the end of the video though. And I hope you enjoyed watching a 12-minute video of me explaining why this is the future of road transit. Later.